So, all right, we're going to get into it. Uh, first up today, we have Fallon Bader. Uh, Fallon is the owner of The Sprouting Kitchen, which is a local business that hosts cooking classes outside on local farms and virtually online. Thank you so much. Take it away, Fallon. Awesome. Hey, everybody. So thank you for that introduction. My name is Fallon. I am the owner of a local business called The Sprouting Kitchen. Uh, we started in 2019 actually doing cooking classes outside on local farms in Albuquerque. We would go to the farm, uh, get a farm tour from the farmer. They would uh, give us a chance to harvest and then we would, uh, I would bring like an entire pop-up kitchen. We'd do a cooking lesson there and then we would sit down and eat everything together. And that one season that I got to do it in person was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I see you guys have a farm tour later with Cheese Bus Farms. And we did our classes, our first outdoor class on Cheese Bus Farms. So a little uh, fun fact there. And that was going really great. And then of course, with the pandemic, I had to move my business to be virtual. So for the past year, I have been teaching virtual cooking classes uh, right here on Zoom. So I could probably say I'm pretty, pretty much a pro at teaching uh, <laughs> cooking classes on Zoom. I've taught over a hundred of them. So with that, uh, I wanted to do a kind of cooking demo today as, you know, this is the beginning of the growing season. There's so much uh, growing and it's beginning to get really excited. And I wanted to kind of show a recipe. And before I do that, I'm just going to share my screen and show you a PDF. Uh, so actually this is part of a, um, a bigger PDF series, which I can give you guys a link if you want to sign up at the end for it. And it's called, uh, our three favorite formula recipes for seasonal eating. So these three are all recipes that will help you make um, dishes, recipes with really whatever you have on hand, right? Because when it comes to cooking, sometimes following a recipe is great, but especially when you're trying to eat more seasonally, or maybe you're shopping at the farmer's market or La Mondisa Co-op, right? You are going to, you know, get what looks good that day. So the three recipes here are how to build a salad, how to build pesto. You don't have to just use basil. You can use all different sorts of greens in there and how to build a coconut curry. Today, I am going to show you how to build a salad. So I'm sure everyone here has made a salad before, uh, but a salad is really, there are so many possibilities of what can be in a salad. It's more than just lettuce, tomatoes, and cucumbers, right? There's so many fun additions. And this uh, PDF here kind of goes through all these different options. And I'm going to show you today a kind of like really quick, tasty salad that you could put together. And I'll kind of walk you through the steps as we go. All right. So, the first things first when you are making a salad is you want to think about what type of greens do you have? So I'm actually part of a local CSA here called the Better Together CSA and I got some amazing greens yesterday. Uh, I actually do not even know what the varieties are but they are these little like cute lettuce cup looking lettuce and then these are like a darker green uh, purpley, kind of like a romaine type. Uh, but the cool thing is you can, you know, whatever greens you have, whatever looks good, wherever you are getting them from is where you want to start. Uh, and for this recipe, if you were to look at the PDF, I kind of broke it down into what are your greens, uh, soft, gentle, uh, or like these ones, right? Any sort of lettuce is going to be kind of soft, doesn't have a ton of kind of punchy flavor um, or is your lettuce something like kale which is a bit more fibrous I don't know about you but I do not like to eat raw kale I think kale needs to be massaged with some extra flavors in there 
Um, or is it a spicy green, like arugula, mustard, right? So for those, maybe adding a little bit of sweetness into your dressing to mellow that bitter flavor. So we've got these nice kind of simple greens here. I'm just going to chop off some of the bigger stems here at the end. And you also wanna think about like texture, right? So whenever we're putting a meal together, you have your obvious flavors, right? Oil, salt, spices, but texture also contributes to flavor, right? So if something's like really finely chopped versus a big rustic piece of lettuce, that's going to taste different, right? So I'm going today for more of a rustic style. So I'm actually going to keep my leaves in big pieces. And it's going to be more of a like, when you get your, you know, you're serving this to people, when they get their salad, they will have to chop it up on their own, right? So kind of these nice big pieces, because I think these look really pretty. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, mess with them. And I have a big bowl here off to the side where I'm just adding my greens. Let's see, I'm gonna add, this is actually a huge head of lettuce. So this is another thing too, like um, this is right more of a like romaine style. And a lot of people, what they wanna do is just chop the bottom off. And you can do that if you're gonna eat the whole head. But if you're not, I recommend just peeling the leaves off of the head, you know, as much as you're going to eat, just like that. These ones are quite large, so I'm gonna give them a quick little chop. But like I said, really up to you. Okay, next in the green family of our delicate greens, I'm going to add some herbs. So I think we, we think of herbs a lot of times as something to put um, as a garnish, which is tasty and great, but herbs can be also part of a salad mix, right? Uh, you can buy really great salad mixes at any sort of grocery store, like a mesclun mix, right? But you can also make your own with what, what you like. So I've got some parsley here. And for this, I do want a nice kind of finer chop. I don't want kind of huge pieces of parsley. So I've got maybe mm, a half a cup of parsley going into my salad bowl. And honestly, these are just the herbs that I had gotten in my in my CSA share. So I'm kind of just uh, utilizing what what I have on hand. And that's the beauty of making a seasonal salad is you're really highlighting what is uh, really fresh. And also nutrition wise. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm also a registered dietitian. So I'm always, you know, thinking about the nutritional aspect of what we are eating. If something is, is really fresh, right? If it's recently harvested, it is going to retain more nutrients. The longer something sits on a shelf or a truck on its way to get here, the less nutrients it's going to have, right? So really capitalizing on what is seasonal is going to get to us the most nutrient dense uh, uh, produce that we can, that we can get. And this is cilantro. So I just chopped up some cilantro. And one thing to know about your, I call them the delicate herbs. Uh, delicate herbs are anything where the stem is edible. So basil, cilantro, um, parsley, dill, right? Think about those. those. The stem is really soft. And the stem, you don't have to go through. Like sometimes I'll see people, right? They have cilantro and they pick off every single leaf. Who has time for that? <laughs> I definitely do not, right? So in my opinion, there is no need to pull every leaf off of your uh, cilantro plant. The stem is totally edible. So I like to just kind of like chop up the stem with the leaves. You know, if it's a really big stem, I'll take it off, but I don't worry too much about it. The only delicate herb that I will pull off the stem is mint. I find that the mint stem is kind of like more woody. So I will pull that off. And then your, your non-delicate herbs are going to be your woody herbs, which are um, thyme, oregano, rosemary, uh, right? Anything that has that kind of more like woody stem. 
So those ones you do want to pull off of their off the stem. All right, so again, maybe about a fourth to a half a cup or so of my herbs. And there you have it. Look at how beautiful this is looking already. So just give this a good toss with your hands. Oh, and one more thing. I didn't talk about washing greens. Um, has anyone ever washed greens and then uh, you like wash them under the sink and then when you go to use them, they're wet, right? They're like kind of like moist and a little soggy. That's not what we want. Um, if it is gonna, if it's wet, then the dressing when you add it is not gonna stick to the leaves and you're just gonna get kind of like a soggy salad. So it's really important that uh, if you wash, you should wash your, your leaves, right? Or your herbs and then let them dry. Like I have mine out on a, a kitchen, like a dish towel just to let them dry. Um, another thing, which I actually did not do because I just got these yesterday and the herbs, these ones are not such a great example. Let's see. If you buy um, like a bunch of herbs from especially a grocery store, Right, and usually they come like in a nice compact little bundle with a rubber band around it. Um, what I always do is I rinse them right when I get home from the store. I plop them in a cup, kind of like this, with some water in it. Uh, kind of like you were gonna, you know, have a vase of flowers. So plop them in with the water and then put a plastic baggie like this on top, on top of the whole cup with the herbs in it and store that in your fridge and it'll keep your herbs fresh for like, I've had herbs like that for up to two weeks, at least two weeks. So it's really a great way to uh, make sure that the, the life of your herbs goes uh, as long as you can. So a great way to make sure you get a nice long shelf life on your herbs. Okay, so we've got our greens all situated, hanging out. Next, let's talk about dressing. So, Right, I'm working with more of the delicate soft greens. Um, and for this, I have a, a favorite salad dressing that I love to make with this, um, which has a little bit of a story. I traveled to Paris years ago. And when I was there, uh, a lot of dishes came with like a side salad. And the side salad was pretty simple, just like some greens, maybe some tomatoes. Uh, and there was this, like every year we ate seemed to have like a very similar dressing. It was kind of definitely oily, lemony, a little garlicky, but there was like something in there that I didn't recognize the flavor, but it just added so much depth to the dressing. So that secret ingredient is not garlic. <laughs> garlic is pretty common, right? When it comes to salad dressing. So I'm gonna show you how to make it. But first take a mortar and pestle uh, these are really great for making like homemade salad dressings. If you don't have one, highly recommend getting them. There's tons of fun to pound whatever your dressing is. You could also use a blender or just finely chop for this as well. Okay, the secret ingredient is anchovies. So if you don't eat, you know, any animal products then just omit the anchovies, of course, you don't have to have them, but I do think they add really nice flavor. So uh, usually I just do like one, one little fish piece of the anchovies. You can get them in like a tin. So I take the anchovy, um, one clove of garlic, and then a pinch of salt, probably like a fourth of a teaspoon. You know, at this point, your anchovies are gonna be pretty salty to begin with. So that's gonna add some extra salt too. And then comes the fun part going to kind of crush like a kind of a, a mash and stir action here. Not going to look that pretty because <laughs> it really is just mashed anchovy and garlic, but I promise the anchovy, what it does is it just adds um, saltiness and umami, right? Umami is this term that means like a savory depth of flavor. It, it just, you don't taste fishiness. Uh, you just taste a really full, full bodied dressing, right? Kind of sounds like I'm talking about wine, but I'm talking about a salad dressing here because it is that good. 
Okay, next we are going to add some lemon juice. So I've got one lemon here and I'm going to add the juice of about a half of a lemon. I love lemon juice in salads. Um, you always want to add some sort of acid, right? That could be vinegar, um, other citrus fruits, but I'm kind of impartial to lemon. I just think it adds such brightening flavor. So I'm just squeezing that. If I got any seeds, give that a good stir. All right, next. Uh, a common ingredient when you're making like a vinaigrette, which is pretty much what um, this is similar. Vinaigrette just means like oil and vinegar or some sort of acid, which we're using lemon juice instead of vinegar, uh, is mustard. Because mustard, what it does is it creates an emulsification. So, right, when you've made maybe a salad dressing and you have oil and vinegar, and unless you shake it really, really hard, it usually separates, right? Classic, like, science experiment in middle school. <laughs> but what you can do to keep your dressing from separating is to use a little bit of mustard. So I'm gonna add about one teaspoon of mustard, just some Dijon mustard, which is a nice like ground um, pureed type of, of mustard. Mix that in. And now I'm using a spoon instead of the mortar because it's just easier to mix it. And then last is just our olive oil. So you're just gonna kind of stream some oil into the vinegar. About maybe a couple tablespoons. And what you're looking for is it should be nice and like a gold, golden color from that oil, olive oil and the mustard and should be kind of glossy. All right, and let's see, you gotta taste it to see if it needs anything else. Mm, so good, perfect. Actually, I love lemon juice. So I'm just gonna add a touch more lemon juice. But besides that, dressing is ready to go. But I am going to wait till everything is ready to dress. I'm going to kind of dress the salad at the end because if you add the salad dressing too early, it can cause it to get a little soggy. Okay, so now if um, on my PDF, I call this the crunch. So the crunch for me, I'm a big texture person and I really love to have different textures in, in everything that I eat, but especially something like a salad. So a common crunchy thing that people add to salad is breadcrumbs. Uh, so, or croutons really. Uh, and they're so easy to make homemade croutons. All you need is some old or like some stale bread that you, you know, didn't get to quick enough. Or you can use, I'm gonna use today some panko which is like a kind of just larger, uh, the crumb is a little bit larger than say, like a traditional breadcrumb. And I have my pan, I'm using a cast iron here. I've got it on a medium heat. And what we're going to do is just toast our breadcrumbs. So this is just gonna add some really nice flavor and that toastiness. We don't want to eat the breadcrumbs raw. Um, if we did, they would just be, they would just taste like kind of like white bread that doesn't have much flavor to it. So I'm just sprinkling in some breadcrumbs. I already added my olive oil. And then I'm just going to give this a kind of stir, make sure that all of those breadcrumbs get nice and incorporated into the oil, because the oil is what's going to cause it to get crispy. Awesome. And then on the note of crunchiness, we're also going to add some nuts. So I have some raw pine nuts here. And pine nuts 
are just a flavor that I really love. They add such like unique fattiness in the flavor there. And when you toast pine nuts, you really bring out uh, a really different flavor than if you were to just eat them raw. So I love to toast them. I would recommend definitely keeping an eye on your pine nuts as they can go from raw to toasted quite fast. So always keeping an eye on our breadcrumbs in our pine nuts. So we're just gonna let everything kind of do its thing here. Other nuts you could use, really anything, but I love like pistachios and salad I think are really good. Almonds, walnuts, you can do, uh, a lot of times if I'm making a salad like super fast, I'll just use um, like sunflower seeds because I always have those on hand and they're a bit cheaper than uh, nuts and both nuts and, and seeds like sunflower seeds, hemp seeds have a lot of really great health benefits. Uh, they're high in magnesium, all sorts of minerals, fats, protein. So they're just a really great addition. I add nuts and seeds to like so, so many of my meals. I think it's always a nice kind of idea. Okay, it's probably a little tricky to see, um, but my breadcrumbs are getting a little bit kind of crisp brown. I'm just gonna turn the heat down and let those kind of finish up while I show you what other vegetables I'm going to add to my salad. I'm gonna bring you guys back over here. Okay, so I've got, now comes another fun creative part is adding other vegetables to your salad. You can keep it simple and not add anything else, um, but I like if I have other veggies, uh, why not, right? So, I have some pickled beets that I had made previously and they are just kind of in my fridge. So I wanted to use those. And I'm just going to give these a nice kind of rough chop here. I've also done this with um, like really any kind of, I love pickling radishes or turnips, any kind of like root vegetable, it just adds some nice like tanginess, right? That fermented tanginess to your salad is really, really great. Um, you can also just roast like any root vegetable. I love adding a nice roasted vegetable to a raw salad. It gives it that nice like roastiness that you get from cooking something. So you have the raw greens with the roasted uh, vegetables. It's just a nice kind of combo there. All right, so now we're gonna start assembling as we go. So I've got some beets here. You do wanna make sure that things generally uh, go together, right? Like, what would be an example of things I put, would not put together? So I wouldn't put like beets and like pickled beets and um, like tomatoes. To me, that doesn't really like go together, pickled beets and tomatoes, right? So you like wanna think about do the flavors kind of pair well together? That's going to be an important part. Um, and then I have some asparagus that's actually growing in my garden. I just gave this like a five minute steam just to cook it a little bit, but to keep it nice and crunchy and nice and like fresh on that flavor. And that's really it for my veggies that I'll be adding. I'm gonna grab some tongs. And now I'm going to add my salad dressing. So I just added it all on in there and grab some tongs. This is where now we really wanna to start to incorporate the dressing and the veggies, the other veggies that we've added so that everything gets nice and well coated. Um, I love the, like, if you've ever cooked with red beets before, you know they turn everything like a pink, right? So the beets are now gonna turn our lettuce, just there's a little, a little bit of pink color going on there. All 
All right, so that's kind of the base of the salad. And now how I like to do this is if I'm going to like serve it, I grab my kind of plate or bowl that I'm going to use for serving. You know what, actually, eh, we'll use this. This bowl is a little bit small, but it'll work. I would maybe even use like, cause this is a pretty like, right? Because I left the salad or the lettuce really big. It's a very kind of like, uh, like bushy salad, right? It's very kind of big. Let's see, find some pretty pieces of lettuce to put on top. Those are our little kind of stars there. Just kind of put some pieces of beet on top. The asparagus really blends in. I can't even like see it. Find a piece of asparagus, put that on top. You know, you can kind of make it look pretty. Okay, and then we're going to take our breadcrumbs and pine nuts. And I like to just like sprinkle them right on top. All right, like picture if you were getting salad, you wanna like see those croutons, right? Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, you can season the breadcrumbs, right? Uh, mine are already like, they come a little bit salty. So I didn't add too much, but sometimes I'll add like garlic powder just to give it a little extra flavor. That's always a good idea. And then lastly, oh, and let's see, I didn't even see in the chat. That does sound like a funny mix, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, Erica's all about that dressing. I agree. So if you want to add some cheese as a nice little topping, I like to do it if I have like a nice block of cheese. This is an Asiago um, and I have a peeler, a vegetable peeler. You can take your vegetable peeler and just like peel some nice kind of chunks of cheese on top. And I just think you get these cool little kind of like wedges looking pieces of cheese. And voila, there you have it. You've got a very fun seasonal salad. Um, and like I said, you can really use whatever you have on hand. Um, JR said, yeah, any ideas for vegetarian substitute to the anchovies in the dressing? Yes, I do. Thanks for that question. So I, something that I really love to add to dressings that gives it a similar salty, that umami depth of flavor is uh, miso paste. So miso paste is made from fermented soybeans, right? It's like, I'm sure most of us maybe heard of miso paste. It's what makes miso soup so tasty. Uh, yeah, so I love miso paste. Just put that where you would put the anchovies and mix that in and it creates um, really good flavor. Yeah, I love miso and dressings. That's a good one. Um, and is it okay if I post a link in the chat? If you want to get that, the PDF I showed, um, which has those three recipes, the salad one I went over. Yeah, if you click on that, you just have to um, leave your email address and then um, you get to be added to my email list, which I send lots of recipes and fun stuff. So if anyone wants to check that out, go ahead and you'll get the PDF that I've talked about today. All right, thank you so much. I'm gonna have to try that. That means face is a great adaptation idea. We have a couple of minutes here if anybody else has other questions. And actually I have one right off the top if that's all right. Uh, I know that, you know, previous to the pandemic, you were on the farms. Is that something that you're planning to get back into once that's okay? And then how does that, how does that change cooking classes? I imagine that's gotta be pretty complicated, right? To go out in the field and cook things. How does all that work? Yes, yes. Um... Good question. I like, I feel like I'm so into the virtual world still that I like forget that. Yes. So like by July, we're hoping to have virtual, sorry, we're hoping to have in-person on the farm classes again. 
Um, so that way too, like if people sign up for my email list, you can keep in touch uh, with kind of what's going on in my business or I'm on social media too. So uh, the, our classes are seriously so much fun. <laughs> like I miss them so much. And how it works is I bring, I have like a big Coleman, like Coleman stoves that are run by propane. So we, we put those up, got folding tables, cutting boards, knives. Um, I provide all the, like, you know, we do like three to four different recipes and then we break into groups and um, we just cook a couple different dishes all focused on what's seasonal on the farm. Um, and then we, we sit together and eat it. That sounds great. So, so the recipes would then be pretty darn different from farm to farm, right? Cause it's just based on what, what they grow right there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's kind of very, um, what is, yeah, what is growing on that farm. Um, but I also, like, we're not doing crazy, uh, fancy recipes, right? It's, it's recipes that people can make, uh, at home and really trying to get people to be more confident in cooking produce, seasonal produce. Cool. And then Mohammed in the chat asked, um, do you post this con I'm, I'm guessing it's this content <laughs> on your social media. Can you tell everybody where your social media is at? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, um, put my social media tag there. It's at the sprouting kitchen. Um, and I am on Instagram a lot. Um, Facebook also same thing, uh, the sprouting kitchen. So, um, yeah, check me out. I, I, I'm always posted on there. Oh, and one more fun thing that I'm actually doing tomorrow in, in Old Town, at, it's a little grocery store called the Tiny Grocer, it's super cute. Um, I'm doing a cooking event there tomorrow. We'll be making all different types of soups and flatbreads and the funds will go towards a local farmer's um, summer internship fund. Um, Lorenzo Candelaria, who's like a, a seventh generation farmer in the South Valley. So we're raising funds for that. So. Um, if you go on my social media or email me, I can send you the info for that too. Thank you. All right. Thank you.